my shirt ripped, my elbow was bleed. Like I, I was like, it was a pretty serious injury, but I was trying to pretend like it didn't hurt at all. Hi Glamour, I'm Nina Dobrev, and today I will be breaking down some of my iconic looks from film and television. Degrassi, The Next Generation. This was one of my first roles ever. I think I was 14 when I auditioned for the show. Me in the split position is my character Mia's audition for the Degrassi cheerleading team. And it was also my audition to be on Degrassi. And I was so nervous, both in the audition and when we were filming the, the actual scene on set. It was one of my first jobs. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what a mark was. My style definitely progressed from the beginning of the show. Towards the end of the show, my character becomes a fashion model. When I was leaving to start Vampire Diaries, they had to find a way to write me out of the show, so they had my character get a job in Milan. I think it was Milan. And so we had all these photo shoots and these gowns and much higher fashion moments towards the end of the show. There had been an evolution for my character, but also for me as a person. I was starting to become more comfortable in my own skin. I'd been on set now for a few years. And it was fun to put on all these nicer outfits that were a little bit more um, fashion-y. The next image is from Vampire Diaries. It still is my favorite episode that we ever shot. This specific episode, I got to play Catherine for the first time. I had been playing Elena for a few episodes now and the wardrobe was modern and of the times. When I got to become Catherine, I really got to find this character and I got to embody her and, and I looked so different. This, the fashion was from the 1800s and we had these corsets that were so tiny and they would pull them in so tight. So if you can see, I have an impossibly tiny waist in this, especially compared to the giant hoop skirts. There's like a, a ribbed giant, it's like a cage almost, that they strap to you and it creates this huge shape. It's so beautiful, but it's very uncomfortable. It's funny how when you, when you look at something, you remember it and you're like, oh, that's that, what a good time. And then you're like, wait, I couldn't breathe. The next look is also from The Vampire Diaries from season four. This was the cheerleading outfit and it actually evolved from year to year. I remember in the first season it was a shorter kind of crop top cheerleading outfit with the skirt and then as the years went on, I can't remember why they switched it. it might have been because of me. I probably was like, I don't want to show my tummy anymore. <laughs> and they, they doubled it up and made it longer. We, for some reason, always shot the cheerleading scenes in the dead of winter in Atlanta. So we had to be in these tiny, teeny little outfits outside in the cold, and I was freezing. My character in the show started off as a very naive, sort of doe-eyed kind of, you know, she was a kid. She was a young girl who lost her parents and went through a trauma. And so over the four seasons up until this point, she kind of got a little hardened. A lot of things happened and she grew up and she became a woman. Finding love, losing love, losing a lot of friends. My character died a couple times, I think, and then came back to life and then came back as a vampire. It was just, it was a lot. <laughs> So the next one is Away From Her. This is a film that I did in 2006. In this role, I really got to play around and they put these pink extensions in my hair and I had fishnets and it was, it was so fun to just sort of be someone that's so different than me and explore a different style that I maybe otherwise wouldn't have, but as a result of that, it gave me the ability to really feel like a, a completely different person. It really helped me get into the character. Sarah Polly is the director of this film, and she's a very, you know, beloved, wonderful human actor, director, and it was really exciting to get to, I think it was my first film, to be my first film and have Sarah Polly be the one who directs me. Another fun fact about this is I got to swear for the first time. I mean, I was really young, my mom was on set, and I remember it was scripted that I got to swear, and for the first time I was allowed to swear, not only in front of my mom, but in front of the world. It's a big moment for me. The next one is Then Came You. This is a film that I made in 2018 
with Asa Butterfield. This wardrobe was kind of simple because I've played a flight attendant who had a little bit of wanderlust and she wanted to travel around and, and Asa's character had a crush on me. But it was really, talk about transforming. Having the wardrobe help indicate your character. I mean, this one, I, I felt like a flight attendant and it felt very buttoned up and formal and the hair was very manicured, kind of like the hairstylists, the hairstyles that actual flight attendants have. It was very easy for me to put on this outfit and feel like the character. The next one is Lip Sync Battle. That one was fun, it was so last minute. I remember finding out a couple, like a day or two before they wanted me to do it, because I think somebody dropped out, so they were like, do you want to come, it's last minute. I was like, okay, sure. Because I was doing it against Tim Tebow, who's a football player, they had me do a song and have the wardrobe be football related, which is why we had the jersey and the pants, which I was surprised were decently comfortable. Actually, unfortunately I lost. I did not win, which is a bummer. Maybe I'll go back and we'll have a, a rematch and we'll see if Tim wins next time when I have a little more time to prepare. The next look is Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. That was really fun because I've always wanted to be in an action movie. The irony was that I played the geeky girl that was like a tech nerd, so I didn't have any action scenes. So I pitched this idea to add a scene at the end of the film. We added a bit where she was gonna die unless she took it into her own hands and I, I grabbed a gun and had this big hero moment, was about to be a badass, but then I trip and fall because it's in character for me to be clumsy and then accidentally end up shooting a bunch of people as a result of it. Oh my God, this is awesome. The fashion in this, in this movie, we wanted her to have more of a sophisticated sort of like chic and yet covered up kind of energy. I think that was a Burberry jacket that I'm wearing in the photo with Vin here. They were still kind of muted in blacks and whites and grays and sort of understated fashion, but at the same time, really good materials, really high quality products and comfortable. Oh, actually I just thought of something. Crazy story. On the day that this photo was taken, it was one of our last days of shooting. And as a wrap gift, Vin Diesel got us all these crazy gifts that were so cool and fun. I got some sort of a bike and I was so excited. It had triple X engraved in the bike and it had my name engraved in the bike. I was just so in awe. So right in that moment, right before we shot this scene, I got on the bike and I like went to ride it around the set so that he'd see me riding. And like an idiot, for some reason, like took a turn really fast so that I could flex my talents on a bike, but karma bit me in the bum, and I flew off the bike because it slid across, like in front of the whole crew, mind you. 150 people saw me eat shit right in front of them, and I was fully only doing this for Vin to see it, and I didn't realize that Vin wasn't even there. It was a stunt double who looked exactly like him was on set. So I did it for nothing, but I have this, uh, this shot from behind the scenes where like my whole side is bleeding, my elbow is bleeding, and they had to like sew it up together and they put this coat on because they had to cover all, they had to like, they didn't want anyone to see all the, the gashes and the ripped clothes. So we, that was a last minute add to the scene was this coat because of that. Fun fact. Next up is love hard. The wardrobe in this film was interesting. In Los Angeles, she wears dresses, she's trendy, she goes to work. She's got a little bit more, you know, casual chic fashion. But unfortunately, when she arrives in Lake Placid to surprise Josh, her suitcase gets lost. She literally has nothing else except for the clothes that are on her body and she wanted to impress the boy that she was meeting for the first time. So she wore a tiny little mini dress and high boots and only had a backpack and a bag as a carry-on. For most of the film, Natalie wears clothes from Lake Placid from the store that Josh works at. So they're kind of graphic tees, baggy pants, overalls, beanies, scarves, puffy jackets, or Josh's clothes. I thought that was really cool, especially for the journey of my character to show the exterior is just a facade. It's all, it, it, what's most important is what's inside, not really what you see on the outside. And not only does my character realize that, but you can see it happen through the wardrobe. And I liked the symbolism of that. So 
Netflix is probably gonna kill me for telling you guys this, but there's two, there's a, a scene with Darren Burnett's character where we are in the woods right before we go bobsledding and I'm wearing a vest. And then there's another scene when I'm with Jimmy's character and we're at the old folks home and I'm also wearing a vest. The fun fact is I'm wearing the same vest in both scenes, but I think in post-production when they watch the movie, somebody decided that they didn't like that I was wearing the vest twice. God forbid I wear the same outfit twice in a movie. So they changed the color of the vest. Shh, don't tell anyone, it's our little secret. Thank you so much, Glamour. It was really fun revisiting some of these looks and going down memory lane with you. See you next time.